mohon jauh Is my own LeBron James that uh Space Jam 2 review, yo. <laughs> that uh La China James pretty much Chinese market debacle. That movie was an insult to eighties babies. I mean it, bro. I was born in eighty one. I'm gonna say that. Throwing a lot of missing that stuff in movies don't work. First thing, Casablanca, this and that night. I mean, bro, this shit was an unlimited Nike commercial. I mean, it was a, just a non stop commercial. Like, bro, you driving to the tune world first thing, the whole become a Nike symbol. Yeah, how that work? Nigga cool. drop. Turn to a dike, sip. It was just the whole entire movie was an insult. It was just an insult to somebody's intelligence, man. Like, I don't even know who the movie was aimed for, who it was. You know, kids, was it a basketball movie? I mean, if anything, it did prove a point how some people get distracted from learning coding and Computer skills, computer literacy, literacy skills. Ooh. I'm just trying to figure out who this movie was made for. Then it was almost two hours long, and I'm not. I can't lie. It, couldn't hold my attention that long. Man. It really couldn't. Because, I mean, I actually tried to watch as much as I could just to pretty much criticize it because I knew what it was going into. And now when I go back and watch the old Space Jam, like, wow. Like, I mean, even though that was a bad movie, shit. Michael Jordan was a mannequin in, in that one. He made Michael Jordan look like he gave an A1 performance. Now the gross part of this movie was the vanity, the the just the self self proclamation, self proclaiming it. It's all oh, the king, world is kingdom. LeBron, uh, hundred million followers all over the world, and they'll take over the world through LeBron James followers. Are you sure? Not to mention sharing the show. Sit up there, throw a first take the other morning. Going off about a kid's movie. I mean, bro, me, I know I'm smoking, I'm chill. Ain't no need for me to be arguing, yelling, defending no man. But, bro, this dude sitting up there bashing, and they went from talking about the a movie to talking about Michael Jordan didn't. Now, people don't care about discount Michael Jordan career with the Wizards. Man, everybody knows what that is. Every Jordan fan knows what that is. And I don't even... I mean, we... I compartmentalize stuff. So I'm separating basketball and all this goat talk. But first of all, just to make this clip with everybody. MJ the GOAT. 
school being my top eight, seven or eight. LeBron ain't better than Kobe. I'm still trying to see where LeBron better than Larry Bird. I'm still trying to see this. Cause y'all need to stop that shit. Y'all be disrespecting legends, bro. Y'all be disrespecting legends, dawg. A lot of y'all be talking that eye test shit. I've been watching basketball my entire life. Man, y'all don't understand. Michael Jordan had to develop. Michael Jordan always was a killer. Boy, man, playing against Larry Bird. Larry Bird, bad motherfucker. Man, y'all better respect that. Charles Bogley, bad motherfucker. No one thing I gotta say about being a Michael Jordan fan, we were allowed to love other superstars. Shit. It got to a point sometime me and my big cub go rest the dead Rendell Riley. Man, look. Me and him, we used to record every Bulls game, bro. People don't understand back in Back in the nineties, early nineties, going into two thousand. Well, no, I think all that stopped in like ninety eight. In New Orleans we didn't have a basketball team. But we used to get TNT, TBS, uh UGN, the Chicago station. And what other games we was getting? And we used to get Fox Sport West. Cause that's when the best damn sports show was out. Yeah. Lay it on. Best damn sports show came out, what, 97, 98, I believe. But anyway. No, about like 96. Which was actually the best damn sports show ever. And damn, to be honest with you, now that I think about it, that's what all this shit is. The best damn sports show run them up. But the best damn sports show was good. It was responsible. Man, maybe Tom Or damn, Tom Arnold had more integrity than Stephen E. Smith. Ain't that a bitch? Yeah you know I mean <laughs> Sam Arnold had more integrity, journalistic integrity, than Stephen A. Schmidt, Bruce Oh, man, this is going to be my high rant on everything I don't like about sports, basketball, media. It was, it was a, a, a Space Jam review, but I'm high right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that boy, man, shout out to Self Talk for that boy. What's this clown, that ugly boy name, man? You were Chris Bruce or the eye couple. You're talking about uh, Rob Parker. Yeah, bro. I know a lot of people have a lot of things to go at Rob Parker about. But one of my most personal things is where he was completely out of line. Then he, he, it looked like he was drunk on air, like he was drunk for the pain, cold medicine. Uh, when he got up there discrediting RG3, talking about this man's street credibility, why? Oh, I hear in a locker room. You know, I, I hear on the streets about from other players, you know, he's not down with the brothers, you know, he's he's one of, not one of us. Like, man, what you mean one of us? Man, clown, man. <laughs> Pure fucking dickhead. You one of us. 
credibility. What the hell that man, what the hell street credibility have to do with a man playing, coming out of a, a highly decorated Texas football program? Your dude come from Baylor, man. Baylor might seem like a small school to, to the country. In Texas, that's big shit. Really in Texas, any school, big shit. <laughs> but, um, yeah, man, there was no need. Then, not to mention the coach at the time. Because, really, even in defense of RG3. Man, even back then, I mean, on the platform, I, I'm on Facebook, yo. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Shit. <coughs> As a brother. <coughs> me at the time, I was saying OG3 don't need to go out on that field against Seattle. That boy went out there with a damn splint on his leg. That shit wouldn't even secure it at any time he would have planted on that ground. That boy was liable to tear his knee clean in half. A break a bone, a split joints, anything could have prepped. And pretty much that's damn near what happened. He forgot. That he had that split instinct kicked in and up, 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 and he fucked his leg up and he's still trying to get up, go back in the game. So stop talking about motherfucking street credibility and talk about motherfucking heart. That dude ruined his career, put everything on the line. Money and doors, man, because his heart too fucking big. So maybe some athletes might need to take that as a lesson. Man, these, these, man, these franchises don't give a shit about y'all. Yeah. We all have friends that's in the NFL, NBA, especially coming out in New Orleans. Shit, I could run some shit by, by the dude who used to play for the Vikings and the Eagles, you know hear I me? Mean? Because we friends on Facebook. Like, I used to watch shit that used to go on through the season. I used to post certain things. But I know I was responsible about what I was posting about contract shit with dude. Because, bruh, after dude got it, he, he signed pretty much the biggest contract for a receiver at the time. In Minnesota, got rid of that man and shipped that man, to, uh, you know, dumped that man to the Dolphins. And I watched that season. I watched this man about to get 1,400 yards. I think he had 11 touchdowns at the time, nine touchdowns. Man, doing his fucking thing. But you know when you're meeting them quotas, you're meeting that criteria, they got to pay you. So next thing you know, they're going away from him at the end of the season. Mr. Play all fucked up the whole season because they don't want to pay nobody. People don't understand that kind of shit go on. And if I'd have been posting that kind of shit, oh, man, look, they're going away from that man, this and that. You don't know how that would have affected his money even more. Because them people watch them profile, they see who you, your friends, they look at all that cross cross shit. You know? These people are private investigators, these dudes be, in, be all in your life. They pay people for information. I got a Chris Henry story, rest in peace. You know? Bitch ass nigga recording that man. Yeah. 
is on some shit. You know, like that man from our bell chase, he called bag of the cutoff. You know anybody know that man, you know, blah blah blah. You know that man who smoking grass in the in the all season. Mm. Super cool ass man, rip man, look super cool ass dude. At the time caught up. I don't know how she is now, God bless her. But at the time, it just, you know, crazy chick. Mm, some real crazy shit. I know I'm running my mouth around me. Mm. I have a, I have a lot of stuff I be wanting to talk about, yo. Like I said, I'm, I'm kind of using this YouTube shit to break out my shell. You know, on some shit. I had home girl, you know, just passed away, and I'm kind of using this as a kind of grieving process here. You know? So I'm like slick side documenting this shit. That's why, like an earlier video, I was saying stuff like. I don't care about, you know, new YouTube shit. I'm just running this shit, running my mouth, speaking what's on my mind, getting shit off my chest and, and running with it. But, I mean, I'm after watching a lot of people's videos and shit, you know, I, I, I'm one of those people that just like to help locally. But now I'm realizing I do need to, you know, try to branch out and do more. You know, do my fault. I ain't even gonna say do more, do a lot more. Fuck the friend. A real talk. And a shout out to Kwame Brown. Really the shout out to Sinu. Shout out, man. Everybody, man. Look. Get all some shit. That conversation. Them dudes had the other night. That them brothers had the other night. Boy, that a real the shit ever, boy. People don't know how dangerous that conversation was. Boy, man, I'm going to do a separate video on that, boy. Man, I can't even. And I'm going to say this. See, see that boy called that dude, man, that brother Casino. I've been a long time subscriber, that dude. I'm fresh with this one because I just had this profile for about a year. But on my other profile, Shad one, been on that dude about two, three years. And the way I got on him, man, who we did a video on? He did a video, I think it was on some cash money and no limit shit. And what people had to understand, I lived through that shit. Nigga lived G Slim, my big cousin, R.I.P. My homie Speed was signed to no limit, my classmate. Nigga, I put on, man, look rocking with this dude. When P and them gave that boy the fucking, um, the train. He signed a boy, gave a boy ghetto commission. P signed a boy. Boy gave him cash. Chevy Tahoe's and no limit change. But dude was like 16, 17, so you know. Shout out Speed, bro. Always big brother. He dunked on me. I dunked on his ass back. But you know what it is on that court. My dog. <laughs> yeah, man. I just go on and on with the rappers, man. Damn. That's a whole mess. Oh man, I gotta get myself together, man. Yeah, I'm trying to do this. My knees and came outside through all my little game. Kind of early morning, I 
berbahaya semua saya sendiri tahu. Trying to chill, smoke myself. So y'all be cool. I don't even know what the title is. This high ramblings. I gotta fix my tooth. Start drinking a cafe Bustelo, you hear me? What it is, what it is. I ain't here for no beauty to kind of test some sexy motherfucker no matter where I'm at. Let me stop with it. That'll be cool.